From WNEP, the news station, this is 2023, a look back. Hello and welcome to a special edition of Newswatch 16, where we take a look at the year gone by. I'm Lisa Washington. And I'm Scott Shea for 2023 brought us many memorable moments. Here is a look at some of Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania's biggest news stories of the year. The new year began two days after news broke that a Monroe County native was arrested in connection with the murders of four University of Idaho students. After a hearing, 28-year-old Brian Koberger, who is from Chestnut Hill Township, was extradited to Idaho to face charges. The case continues to play out in the court system with no date yet for a trial. In February, a Satan club sponsored by the Satanic Temple became the first in Pennsylvania and one of only 10 in the country. It was approved in the Saucon Valley School District despite opposition by many. After initially rejecting the request for the club, the Saucon Valley School District was forced to allow the organization to hold its meetings on school property. After years with no suspects or knowledge of the whereabouts of his remains, police solved a six-year-old cold case in March, finding the remains of Robert Barron. They were discovered near Pagnati Park in Lackawanna County, not far from the restaurant the Old Forge businessman owned. 37-year-old Justin Schubeck of Old Forge was arrested and charged with Barron's murder. In April, PPL said it was working to regain the trust of customers after months of billing issues. Initially saying the spikes in customers' electric bills was likely due to higher energy prices, we later learned the problem was the result of a technical glitch. Questions about the billing sparked an investigation by the Public Utility Commission. As of November, the commission is considering a settlement to resolve the billing problems. Summer brought warmer weather and lots of rain to northeastern and central PA. Rain was often a problem as it created what became known as Lake Commerce in Dixon City. A plan to address recurring drainage problems in the area of Commerce Boulevard was unveiled. Work began on a new drainage system, eventually bringing Lake Commerce to an end. Often when it wasn't raining during summer, wildfire smoke blanketed parts of northeastern and central Pennsylvania. In June and July, Canadian wildfires were responsible for poor air quality, levels not seen before in our area. The extreme conditions affected both people and businesses, forcing some to return to wearing masks and those with severe respiratory issues to stay inside. A new school year began in August for students in northeastern and central PA, only to be disrupted for many districts because of threats. Districts in Lackawanna, Luzerne, Wyoming, and other counties became the targets of numerous threats, causing inconveniences for students, their parents, and school staff. This year also saw the passing of one of Pennsylvania's former first ladies, Ellen Casey. The mother of eight and widow of Governor Robert Casey passed in August. Friends, family, even President Joe Biden remembered the former first lady. September had several breaking stories. Heavy rains caused flash flooding in Luzerne and Lackawanna counties, killing at least one person, destroying homes, washing out roadways, canceling the Luzerne County Fair, and creating headaches for many home and business owners. Not many people knew there was a mink farm in central Pennsylvania until September, when thousands of the small furry animals were released from the farm near Sunbury. Investigators believe someone intentionally freed the minks that were roaming around central PA. Also in September, history repeated itself when a massive 100-foot sinkhole opened behind an apartment community in Luzerne County, 40 years after it first opened. About 20 residents were forced to leave their homes as the giant hole in Glen Lyon continued to grow. DEP crews worked over several days to backfill that mine subsidence with limestone from a nearby quarry. Other big stories around the state this year include the tragedy just across the state line in East Palestine, Ohio. In February, evacuations were ordered after a Norfolk Southern train carrying hazardous materials derailed. In all, 38 train cars derailed. People in nearby communities in both Pennsylvania and Ohio worried about returning to their homes. Convicted killer Danilo Cavalcante escaped from the Chester County Prison back in August, eluding police for nearly two weeks before he was caught. In March, seven people were killed in an explosion at a chocolate factory in Reading. The R.M. Palmer factory was leveled. The NTSB opened an investigation referring to the incident as a natural gas explosion and fire. 
In Philadelphia, an elevated section of Interstate 95 collapsed in June when a tanker truck carrying 8,500 gallons of gasoline wrecked and caught fire. The driver died and PennDOT opened six temporary lanes within 12 days. As a full year of news comes to an end, fighting in the Middle East continues. This after a surprise attack by Hamas in early October in Israel. The war prompting protests and demonstrations around the world and here in northeastern Pennsylvania. Lisa Washington, Newswatch 16. Some of the other big news stories in our area involved politics. Let's take a look at the faces that shaped Pennsylvania's political scene in 2023. With fidelity. So help me God. So help me God. The 2023 political year began with the swearing in of Pennsylvania's 48th governor. Democrat Josh Shapiro called his landslide victory in November a rejection of extremism by Pennsylvania voters. History was also made that day as the new lieutenant governor, Austin Davis, was sworn in, making him the first African American to be second in command in the Commonwealth. The actual campaign season started early, too, when State Representative Linda Schlegel Culver won a special election for a central Pennsylvania state Senate seat in January. The Republican from the Sunbury area will serve the unexpired term of former State Senator John Gordner, who resigned at the end of last year. Another Republican, Michael Stender, then won a special election to fill Schlegel Culver's unexpired term in the State House. In February, Pennsylvania's junior senator stunned colleagues on Capitol Hill when he checked himself into the hospital for treatment of depression. Democrat John Fetterman spent 44 days at Walter Reed Medical Center before returning to work. It was a rough year for Schuylkill County Commissioner George Halkovich. Embroiled in a scandal involving alleged sexual harassment, the Republican ran for re-election but lost in the spring primary. He wasn't alone. Another veteran county commissioner, Democrat Jerry Notariani in Lackawanna County, also lost his re-election bid in the spring. A couple of district attorney seats opened for the first time in decades. David Christine retired after six terms in Monroe County. His first assistant, Mike Mancuso, was elected to replace him. In Union County, DA Peter Johnson announced his retirement early in the year, then tragically died just before the election. His former first assistant, Brian Kerstetter, was elected to succeed him. Northumberland County DA Tony Matalevich somehow missed the deadline to get his name on the Republican ballot for re-election. He ended up losing the seat to political newcomer Michael O'Donnell. The race for a seat on the Pennsylvania Supreme Court dominated the fall campaigns. It featured a rare negative campaign ad for a judicial election. The ad targeted Democrat Dan McCaffrey. But in the end, the judge from Philadelphia won the seat with relative ease. Democrats swept all the statewide judicial seats in November. Come next year, a few familiar faces will be taking on new roles in the political world. Bloomsburg Fair President Randy Karshner, a Republican, will assume a seat on the Columbia County Board of Commissioners. Former Penn State quarterback Matt McGloin, a Democrat, will take his seat as a commissioner in Lackawanna County. It happened in politics in 2023. I'm Scott Schaefer, Newswatch 16. Everything seemed to be more expensive in 2023. From the grocery store to the gas pump, we take a look at prices from the start of the year to now. When Newswatch 16's look back at 2023 comes right back. The economy was a big focus of 2023. A lot of people focused on prices. That includes Newswatch 16's John Meyer. He watched the numbers all year. Here's a recap. We heard it over and over again at food giveaways during the holiday season. The need more than ever. So many people struggling with rising prices. Inflation. The times are hard. A lot of people can't afford, you know, to buy food. Um, so this is a big help. Everything's expensive. It's so bad. So the economic story of inflation in 2023 is that it's been going down, and it has. We had a peak of last year at around 9% inflation of prices going up. That has steadily declined and leveled off a bit towards the end of the year. So why is inflation such a big story if it's going down? Well, prices aren't going down. Let's take a look at how inflation works. So in fall of 2020, say your monthly expenses were around $4,000. Well, inflation of 7% brought that up to $4,200 a month. Then the next year, inflation's another 7%, so you're building on top of this number to $4,500 a month. This year, inflation's lower, but prices still went up to $4,700. You see it at the grocery store. Say you bought ground beef four years ago for four something. Now, 
a pound of it's seven something. That's how inflation works. Food prices have been one thing that has kept going up. One of the places people notice inflation the most. Housing prices, another big part of the inflation story. They keep going up. But gas prices are a different story. One thing going down for now. As we're winding down the year, gas prices are a bright spot. We can see this was as $5 a gallon we saw a couple years ago. It has been going down since then. A little bit of a peak this year, but it has gone down this fall. One thing is certain as we start 2024, the prices of everything will continue to be a focus and concern. John Meyer, Newswatch 16. Inflation hit many farmers hard this past year, and so did the weather. A late freeze ruined crops and severe storms battered homes. A look at the highs and lows, courtesy of Mother Nature. When 2023, a look back continues. From hazy skies to severe storms, northeastern and central Pennsylvania endured all kinds of weather in 2023. Storm Tracker 16 meteorologist Allie Gallo has our look back. The year started out in the middle of a mild and snowless winter. 2023 will go down as one of the warmest and one of the least snowiest Januarys and Februarys ever on record for both Northeastern and Central PA. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, one of the most important days of the season for ski resorts, was arguably one of the nicest days of the month of January. Sunshine and temperatures in the 40s were welcomed sights, especially because workers at ski resorts in the area would be making snow quite often the rest of the winter season. In February, PennDOT road crews were able to get a lot of projects done they would typically have to wait until spring or summer to do, like drainage work, brush cutting, and even litter pickup. The last day of the month of March was a busy one on Montage Mountain. It was day 100 of the season for skiers and snowboarders, but it was also the final day the ski resort on the mountain was open for 2023. At the same time, just down the mountain, PNC Field was making history with the season opener for the Scranton Wilkes-Barre Rail Riders. After a 45 minute rain delay, it was the earliest season opener in franchise history and the first baseball game ever played here on Montage Mountain in the month of March. In May, we had a hard freeze late in the season. Newswatch 16 spent the early morning hours here at Heller Orchards in Walt Wallapin. The Heller family used these wind machines to help protect the fruit trees. They also built more than 100 campfires to create warmth for the peach trees. Here at OHF Orchards in Columbia County, farmers lost nearly 40% of the overall yield in the late season freeze. In June, massive wildfires in Canada created a hazy sky thousands of miles away here in PA. This is what it looked like for days, and you probably can remember what it smelled like too. People we talked with described it as something out of a horror film. We did see a hazy sky several other times the rest of the summer and into the fall, but the air quality never got quite as bad as it did that first week of June. On 4th of July weekend, severe storms hit northeastern and central PA, and the National Weather Service later confirmed there were three tornadoes, one in Union County in the Lewisburg area, one in Exchange in Montour County, and one in Dixon City in Lackawanna County. On Saturday, September 9th, heavy rain from severe storms prompted several flash flood warnings in northeastern PA, including in the Back Mountain area in Luzerne County and the Clark Summit and Scranton areas in Lackawanna County. PennDOT officials reported more than 20 roads in Lackawanna, Luzerne, and Wyoming counties were closed due to flooding and damage. Several homes and businesses struggled with major loss and damage, too. Officials of the 61st Annual Luzerne County Fair were forced to shut down festivities, and they estimate it will cost at least $500,000 to restore infrastructure at the fairgrounds near Dallas. Dozens of people were trapped in their cars on Northern Boulevard in South Abington Township that night, and for days we heard countless rescue stories. Two people died as a result of the flash flooding. In October, we had warm, sunny weeks and wet weekends. In fact, it rained every weekend in October, and almost all of the measurable rain we received all October long fell either on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. On Thursday, December 7th, our annual snow thrower contest came to an end when the first inch of snow fell in the WNEP backyard. Exactly one inch fell with that early morning snowfall, but it melted away pretty quickly with a big warm-up later that weekend. Now we wait and see what the rest of this El Nino winter has in store for us for 2024. Allie Gallo, Newswatch 16. Area athletes showed up in 2023, and WNEP was on hand for all the big moments. The state titles, the upsets, and the legacies left behind when our look back at 2023 returns. 
athletes from our area share the thrill of victory with us throughout 2023. Sports director Ron Snyder has the highlight reel from the past year. Our local teams took home some hardware in 2023. In March, the Dunmore Lady Bucks captured the first state championship in school history, defeating a team from the Pittsburgh area. In softball, Northeast and Central Pennsylvania, their squads captured three state titles. In single A, Tri-Valley got it done. In 3A, Villanova recruit Miranda Runco capped off her high school career with a two-hit shutout, leading Mid-Valley to a state title. And in 4A, it was Blue Mountain hoisting the state title trophy in State College. Speaking of Happy Valley, Penn State football started off hot in 2023. A Rose Bowl win in January was followed by six straight wins to start off the regular season. But losses to Ohio State and Michigan cost the Nittany Lions a shot at the college football playoffs. Still, 10 wins good enough for a New Year's Six Bowl game. Penn State heads to the Peach Bowl to face off against Ole Miss. Maybe PSU can tap into our local football talent to push them over the top. There's plenty of athletes at Southern Columbia. The Tigers took home their seventh straight state title, going 99 yards on the final drive of the game for the game-winning touchdown. We'll have to send some love to the Dallas Mountaineers as well. They took out powerhouse Bishop McDevitt and route to a state championship game appearance. 2023 also came with heartbreak. Jersey Shore senior player Max Engel suffered a traumatic brain injury after making a play in a game in September. The 17-year-old died a week later. In July, Dunmore lost the Patriarch to its football program. Former head coach Jack Hensis passed away at the age of 87. His legacy includes 444 career wins. That's third all-time in Pennsylvania. Hensis must have been looking down and smiling when his Bucks, though, won the District 2 title in November. For Newswatch 16 Sports, I'm Ron Snyder. Thanks to you, Mike Stevens shares the beauty of our area every week. He takes a look back at some of the best in just a moment. Turn around and the year is gone, but not before we take a second look at some moments we enjoyed in the PhotoLink library. See you later. As the year comes to an end, Mike Stevens wanted to say so long to it. Here's the story of the year as seen through the windows of the PhotoLink library. The seasons, like the year, come and go. The white and colorless winter. Spring with its offering of new life, coupled with vibrant colors to signal that it's here. Summer, of course, a time not to be denied for its quiet, warm afternoons and pleasant starlit nights. And autumn. We can hardly bear to watch it, for we know what comes next, but we do. We must enjoy the color splashed across the mountains nearby, the crisp, clear air that has a chill in it, but not much of a chill, just a touch. When you think about it, autumn is kind of a cap on the year. Sure, we'll have a bit of winter before the real thing comes in, but it likely won't be much to speak of. It seldom is. So when you stand by a window and watch the winter winds blow outside, remember that spring is not really that far away. You remember spring, the time when you do all that cleanup of the gifts winter so graciously left behind. There's always a hundred things to do, but in the end, it's worth it. Summer comes along and while it has its own set of chores, it also carries with it a quiet beauty. Spring may have returned us to life after the cold dullness of winter, but summer allows us to live it. So, dear viewer, welcome the new year while you think of spring and what it will offer. Then summer, with its deep warmth and with a glorious, lovely autumn as a cap. Then a long winter's rest. All things considered, 2024 doesn't look too bad. Mike Stevens here in the PhotoLink Library. Thank you for joining us for this look back at 2023. We look forward to telling your stories in 2024. Now for everyone here at Newswatch 16, have a great night and a happy new year.